On faculty hiring, they say, we note with dismay that hiring of black faculty at colleges and universities in the United States has actually decreased in recent years. At the current rate, the percentage of black faculty will not reach parity with the percentage of black Americans within our lifetimes. So in the current cultural climate, I don't, they, I didn't go and look at their references. So I don't know, I, I don't know if it's true what they're claiming. I don't know if the stats are good. Uh, and I don't know what recent years refers to. But if these authors are actually claiming that in the last certainly 10, but I would say 20 years, that there is active racial bias against faculty of color, I cry foul. I find this, I find this to be absurd. And what we do know is that in, for instance, historically black neighborhoods, there are economic disadvantages that persist to this day. So we have everything from food deserts to poor educational opportunities. And maybe if we actually care the way that so many people are willing to say they care by putting stickers on their windows and such, we should consider increasing the quality of the science education in the schools in historically black neighborhoods. This, this, it seems to me, would do a better job of increasing the pool of people who are interested in and qualified to become faculty in the sciences, for instance, than in enforcing a, I, I mean, they don't even, they don't even have a, a plan here, but what they seem to be saying is what we need is to, uh, to, in, to enact affirmative action at the faculty hiring level in order to get um, the racial makeup of our faculty to match the racial makeup of the country. I think you're being too gentle. And I will say, uh, I, I aspire to live in a world in which, roughly speaking, it won't be precise, but there is parity between the racial makeup of society and the racial makeup of academic faculties and the racial makeup of boardrooms and all of that. A healthy society would produce that in general on average. And we don't have that, but for various different reasons. But what so I was- So you said there isn't. Th that parity doesn't exist. Yes. A I, it just sounded like you said there is. No, no. Okay. A world that functioned really, really well in which yeah. your race might be an interesting fact about you, but didn't predict your success or mm -hmm. anything like that, it would do that in general. Right. You would see that kind yeah. of thing. And if the public schools look like the communities that they're in, shouldn't the industries in a society look like the society that they're in? It would be cool, you yeah. know, if the opportunities were equally distributed and people had the ability to generate interests that just simply, you know, were passions that they followed, they would end up in these roles in rough proportion to their prevalence in society. That'd be great. However, there's a much better explanation here for why this isn't happening, right? And I'm sorry, but at this moment, there's almost got to be something wrong with you to go into academia. Okay? <laughs> no, there does. You have to be missing... <laughs> see that coming? What? I didn't see that coming. I mean, I, I know that's what you believe. I just didn't see that coming. Right. right but now. okay, especially in the sciences. Mm -hmm. Let's suppose you're passionate about seeking the truth. You're really going to enter an environment that's being overrun by zealots who believe, who wrote whatever that freaking sentence was about the obligation of scientists. Right? Now, we're going to come back to that in a second here. But the, uh, the, the, the obligation. Oh, the... Um Basically, they made some argument about, are we really going to allow people to make scientific discoveries and not pay any attention oh, yes. to their okay. moral failings mm -hmm. or whatever yep. crazy version of the argument they made? <laughs> You're right. um, and, you know, again, I want to come back to that because mm -hmm. there is a proper argument to be rescued from it. But what they've done is another straw man. Um, but in any case, I would point out something that we noticed in all of the mentoring we did of all of the students who passed through our classrooms while we were professors. There were a couple groups of people that were particularly unlikely to go into academia, mm -hmm. right? What I saw were the children- Which for us meant academic science because right. that's what we were teaching. Right. Children of immigrants and uh, minority children who had, or they weren't children at the point they reached us, but people yeah. who had grown up with some sort of adversity and had made it to college, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the reason was perfectly apparent in talking to them which is in a family that has struggled, 
right? If you start talking about, oh, I want to go into women's studies, right? Somebody, hold no, on. No, but that's, that's a straw man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to come back to it. Okay. I'm just trying to make the point about how this works. Let's say it was as bad as mom, dad, I'm thinking of going into women's studies. Somebody grabs you by the lapels and says, look, the fact is this isn't just about you. There isn't a future in that thing. Mm -hmm. And what you should go into is something where there's potential, right? Now, the academic sciences were better. I'm not sure they are better now, right? Mm -hmm. Because the only opportunity that exists in science. The real opportunity comes from insight. And if insight is now going to be filtered through some evaluation of your moral quality and whether or not you take the right positions on men choosing to be women or whatever it is, right? Then the point is, well, there's no opportunity there either. So not only are you choosing an academically hobbled environment where the upside of being a, a scientific academic is low to begin with. Your likelihood of surviving is low because mm -hmm. there are way too few jobs for the number of PhDs produced for reasons we've talked about at other times. So the point is you're going into a dead end path. Now, you'd be better off becoming a doctor or a nurse or learning to code or whatever it is. And so the point is families that have struggled often have kids who are directed, I know how I'm going to make my way in the world. They're much more economically focused. And so to the extent that such people might look at the opportunities of joining the professorate with some sort of skepticism, that's partially on the professorate for not providing an environment that makes any sense. It's absolutely true. And I think I've said this on Dark Horse before, but I actually had uh, more than one conversation about in which this was explicit back when we were at Michigan, when uh, when we were in grad school and I was a TA and you know we we both TA'd for I think ten semesters there, uh, and we got you know we did some some higher level stuff, but we both TA'd a couple of terms of the intro bio series, where which was one of the weed out courses for the pre health, including pre med, pre dental, pre nursing, all of it, and. Very, very low percentage of the students were actually interested or saying at that point, oh, I want to go into science. I want to become a scientist. They would say, I want to be a doctor or I want to be a dentist. I want to be a nurse. But I ended up talking at one point to, um, in one class, you know, labs are wonderful. Teaching labs are wonderful in part because they give opportunity for small discussions that can, can go on for a fair bit of time, sort of like field trips. And so, um, I ended up, as I remember it, talking with two or three young men, African American men, who had not come from a lot of money, but also, you know, they weren't they weren't upper middle class uh, by you know by their backgrounds, but they they you know, weren't desperately poor, um, but their families didn't have much, and they were, you know, it's been a lot of years, so I don't I don't remember the specifics, and I may be you know combining some some individuals here, but you know they had a lot of potential, and I was talking to them about what their what their plans were, and. One of them said to me, and the other or others concurred rapidly. Look, I love the science. I love what we're doing in this class, uh, but there's no there's no chance I'm going into science because I need to be able to provide not just for me but for my family in order to keep us moving in the economic trajectory that um, I am helping us move now. And you know, at that this is now changing too, of course. But at that point in the '90s, uh, when we were grad students. Uh, it looked like becoming a doctor was a secure financial move and becoming a professor really wasn't. Like, yeah. what, are you, what are you going to do there? And also there's no guarantee the way that, you know, if you are, if you are smart and work hard uh, and could get through medical school, there was going to be demand for you. You weren't going to be knocking on doors looking to, for a place to hang up your shingle. Right? Uh, and in fact, we did not recommend. It wasn't like these arguments were made and we were like, no, come on, you should go pursue a Certainly PhD. Not. The yeah. fact is yeah. it would have been irresponsible to advise most students to do it. Yeah. Even the ones, maybe even in some cases, especially the ones who were unusually gifted mm -hmm. in our field, Yeah. right? Do you really, you know, what I did and what I assume you did was sat down with them and gave them a very frank uh, view of what it looks like. And the answer is, okay, you're good at evolutionary biology. Are you good at the kinds of things you will need to be good at to get through grad school? Because those are very different things, right? Are you going to be able to do it? Are you going to be able to put up with the years of trying to get into a secure position? What's going to happen if you end up exploited as an adjunct or a lecturer or whatever else? Um, as so many people are. Right. And so the fact is some of, some of, and I, I, I don't mean favorite, 
uh, in any sense, but one does look at a student who has an unusual gift for the field that it means so much to you, and yes, you would love to have them follow in your footsteps, but at some level, the advice was, no, 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 take that gift that you have and point it at something where you might be rewarded for it was much better advice. Indeed. Um, I, I want to say one more thing before mm -hmm. we move on. Yep. Your point about where you cried foul, right? This point about, well, we're not hiring uh, minority faculty, uh, the, the rate is dropping. Yeah. That may be the case it may be. for reasons you and I have both described reasons that that might be the case that has nothing to do with racism, mm -hmm. right? Now, my point would be, we've lived inside the academy. Mm -hmm. This is this just like the example I use of the bike shop, right? Black bicyclists are less common than you, they, you would expect based on the percentage of black people in the population. Mm -hmm. Is that because the bike store is reluctant to sell bikes to black people? Hell no. It's the absolute opposite, right? You would find that environment very welcoming, right? It's other things. It's whether the roads that you grew up around were hospitable to bikers or they were too dangerous to mm -hmm. contemplate it. Who knows? It could be, could be a lot of things, but it's well, and there, not... Well, there's something to the idea of um, role models who remind you of yourself. And so, you know, this is one of the things that some on the right who decry diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, take aim at. Like, ah, oh, you, you, know, you don't need role models that look like you. It's like, you don't need them. But having stories in which... Uh, people who are doing things that you now aspire to remind you a little bit of yourself. Do make it easier for a child to imagine themselves attaining that. Right. And so... And so, you know, if, if you never see anyone on a bike, if the only time you see a bike is when you watch some Hollywood movie and it's always white characters, maybe it just feels like that's not something that people like me do. Yeah, or it's always a BMX bike and so it doesn't seem like a thing adults do or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But the point is, if you stood by the, the bike lane and you, you know counted people from different backgrounds as they went by and then concluded it must be racism keeping people out of the bike lane you'd be wrong right. it's other processes and right. the point not, here not that that claim hasn't been made right oh the claim is made and you know i'm not ruling out the possibility that it does play a role somewhere is there mm. racism in the tour de france i don't know maybe right. but um but the point is in the academy is it plausible that racism is causing people to hire white folks over equally qualified minority, minority candidates. It's now, preposterous. Today, now. It's preposterous. Yeah. It would be yeah. so far in the opposite direction based on the culture of the academy that it is not only a place to cry foul, but it is simply impossible that that's the causal mechanism here.